I am here with MK Krishna Prasad, who is an EVP of software engineering for our data cloud and Einstein analytics products. Hey, MK, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm so excited that we're here today to talk about how architects should be thinking about how to build well-architected solutions with data cloud. Why don't we start with some of the technical pieces? I know a lot of architects are curious, like what exactly is going on under the hood with data cloud? So architects on the Salesforce platform are very familiar with the transactional database layer, and we have lots of different tools to either replicate or virtualize data as well. But with this new set of tools, with this new data cloud capability, how is this different from what we're used to? I think the way to think about it, if you look at traditionally, we've stored all our data in a transactional database. Right? And so it's great for sort of transactional synchronous kind of rights and everything. Uh, where we run into challenges is usually in scale. Uh, and it, there's two parts to it. One is just the data scale. If you want to deal with like a lot of data, like event data and all of those coming in, that's one part of it. And second is because it's locked into those transactional systems, often what ends up happening is people pull all that data out into other systems to do other processing. For example, if you had to do analytics, you pull all the data and to put it into a data warehouse. You want to do ML, you pull all the data and to put some lakes and to do it. And what we have seen is people do this probably six different times for doing other applications, doing analytics, doing uh, just lake houses, doing ML, doing uh, real-time decisioning and so on. So not only are all the data kind of leaving that system, which means it's going out of that Salesforce ambit, so you lose control on security, you lose control on all the business definitions you have done, that semantics is lost. But also what's happening is you have a proliferation of things which again need to be integrated back into Salesforce, right? And that's exactly. an equal challenge, right? So with data cloud, what we have tried to do is to bring that power of that big data processing, if you may. Uh, where now you can run analytics, you can run ML, you can run decisioning, everything on that same platform. But we did not build it as a silo solution. We said, okay, let's build it into Salesforce. So that way you can use the power of the Salesforce metadata platform and the power of the hyperforce data scale aspects of things. Got it. So we're, and to dive a little bit deeper, so we're bringing in this data. Folks have now probably are getting familiar with terms like data streams and all of the tools we have to bring data into the data cloud. But when we're bringing in that data, it's not getting stored in the transactional database, right? It's getting stored differently. So let's dig into that a little bit. Here's how, at a high level, how data cloud is. We put all the metadata, the user, the dev experience, everything in Salesforce core. So that means they are actually being stored in tables in core as metadata or as like extensions, set up BPOs, BPO entities, and so on. All the data is sitting in a backend sort of hyperforce plane. The way it is architected is at the storage level, we store all these as what are called parquet formats. Parquet is an industry standard columnar format. So that helps you do queries at scale, first of all. Then we integrate that with partitioning so that you can actually okay. put high scale. For example, recently a customer uh, late last month brought in over 3 trillion rows into the system mm. just a week wow. ago, right? So the system is capable of scaling to those numbers. Uh, another example, we have tested up to 100,000 requests per second per tenant. Right. So these are the volumes that the system can have. Right. Petabyte scale data, right? That's a, a term that's been thrown around. And that really changes how we think about building reliable solutions. Because in the past, we th thought about data skew and lookup skew, things like that. In this new format, we don't need to think about those limitations, right? I'm sure there are additional concerns, but it's it's built to be at a larger scale scaled. volume. That's mm -hmm. correct. The key thing what we also did was typically what happens also in a traditional lake house is these systems were built for batch, meaning you have file uploads, works great, but now you have streaming data, it doesn't quite work. And so we actually contributed back to the open source community uh, where we now are able to handle streaming data as events are coming in to be able to update these on, on at scale, right? I think about like thousands of requests per second coming in, we are updating things on disk live, right? And, and then this is iceberg on top of that parquet layer. So they're all stored in S3 buckets. 
It's okay. a parquet format with iceberg on top. Iceberg, again, is an open source representation, which says, what is the table structure of that file? Okay, here's the columnar file. This is the table of that file, right? And what we did was we went and enhanced Iceberg to not only support this Delta incremental updates fast, we also added Salesforce data, metadata to that. Mm -hmm. And with that, that, what we are able to do is something interesting. We are able to open these up with some of our partners like Snowflake and others, where they're able to query live on our data. No copy, no ETL, all security is still with Salesforce admins, but yet you now can let your Snowflake people or your other warehouses and all that to be able to query live on that same data. Now that's super powerful because you've not lost the security, you've not lost the semantics that you have created, right? So data is not leaving the Salesforce ecosystem, but you're letting other tools be able to party it at scale at that level. Got it. So when we say I want to double click on that zero copy data, because again, I feel like that's something we've seen a lot in our in the demos and things like that. So when we say zero copy data, we're specifically talking about those partnerships and being able to visualize the data from Snowflake, things like SageMaker. Is there other is there other so, things so yeah. we mean? Yeah, great, great question. So zero copy means mu- multiple things. One is we have data sitting in our uh, in uh, in uh, data cloud, right? And you want to be able to let other people use that data. There are two ways they can use that data. They can go via our JDBC connector. That's also zero copy, by the way. You're doing live. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you can do it at the file level itself. In cases like Snowflake, and we're working with other partners as well, where they're able to read Iceberg and they're able to do this, they can come down at the file level. Or for other partners, like if you go to, uh, if you're looking at other AI systems or other tools like uh, Power BI or any other tools you might want to use, they can come at that JDBC level. So regardless, you will come at JDBC or file level, you're basically getting a zero copy way of looking at the uh, Salesforce data with full controls of the Salesforce admin. The reverse is also something we're working on this year, which is you want, if you already have existing warehouses, let's assume you've spent a lot of money building those things mm-hmm. already. You don't want to, again, copy all that data, recreate everything. So what we are going to allow you to do is to be able to mount those tables virtually as well. That's the data in virtual. Mm-hmm. That's not there in the product today, but that's something we're working on this year actively. A quick zoom out for folks. I know we mentioned data lake house architecture. For folks who are maybe just hearing about that for the first time, Give us the 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 quick. What makes this a lake house and not a lake? Like, what's the, that difference? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a great point. So, what happens typically is at just first of all, let me s- explain what a lake house is. Traditionally, what used to happen is data warehouses, where you upload a data into a data warehouse. Usually, it's stored in its own proprietary format. Typically, you could only do SQL on it, mm-hmm. right? You have all the typical data warehouses that you know and love. But the challenge was data was getting siloed in there. And then came systems like Spark and all the other things that said, hey, you know what? We can process things at scale, right? It need not just be SQL. It can be Scala. It can be anything else that you want to do. Then the problem started coming and it's, okay, now data is locked in silos and warehouses. So that's kind of the lake house pattern emerged where they said, you know what? Just put files. And then you can have multimodal access, meaning you can do query if you want, or you can do Spark if you want or you can do other things, any other thing on top of it as well, right? So literally you can use the tools of your choice. The problem with lake houses still was that they are, uh, first of all, the lake houses tend to be its own thing. And that's what Data Cloud has stalled by bringing the lake house into the Salesforce uh, sort of pattern. But more interestingly, lake houses tend to be lakes, which means stale body of water. Lakes stop here. You can analyze and predict at best. And then you do a lot of work to bring that back in to mm-hmm. the engagement systems that you're using, whether it's marketing, whether it's service, whether it's sales, Tableau, et cetera. What we have gone and built is the actioning part of it as well. So we make it not only easy to bring data, easy to kind of process it, look at it, unify, harmonize, all that stuff, but you can now act on it. So that means when you look at a service case, you can look at that unified profile, or you can have a trigger that says, it, because there are too many case incidents, uh, I mean, like uh, clicks happening, or maybe you can go call your salesperson or you can go create a service incident automatically. 
Or you could trigger a marketing cloud journey based on that data or an ad tech, right? Or come with your data personnel on Tableau, all happening on that same same system. You don't yeah. build 10 different systems for it. Mm -hmm. Or deal with it. Just thinking about how we would have done this to bring the data back before this, we'd have to go through the Salesforce APIs, which of course have their own limits. And when you're talking about this scale of data, that we run into a lot of lot of issues, a lot of limitations. So it's great. And I think the one thing to point out too is that we're talking about inside this data lake house, it's both structured and, and unstructured data as well that we can use to create these insights. Is that correct? So the way it is, is the unstructured data can come in and then you impose a structure on it because we want it to be Salesforce metadata objects, right? Right. And so you can, but the data can have more other attributes that you're not using. You can impose the structure later. So it can be a schema on read practically, uh, but you use that schema so that rest of Salesforce can work because it's an S object in the system. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I've seen, I feel like I've seen some screenshots of like using so, uh, maybe it's not SQL, but it's a, a version of maybe it's SQL or SQL. You can correct me, but I've seen the queries of how you would actually query uh, data within Data Cloud, and it's, it looks very similar to what you would do with just the transactional database. So yeah, so that's a very important thing. So we support many modes of access of data. One is a traditional REST API of give me an object. It could be a profile and other things. Second is being part of the platform. We support all the SOCL access. So you can run SOCL, traditional SOCL, but the limited is slightly limited than the current SOCL in the sense of we, are, we support SOCL on a single entity in, in Data Lake, Data Cloud, mm -hmm. uh, but we're working this year to enhance it and may support much more scenarios than that. The third is we support full SQL. Okay. Uh, ANSI SQL, and that you can do at scale uh, because we, we are not sort of, uh, you're not subject to the same limits as you would on the traditional transactional platform. I would love to hear more about some emerging best practices that you've seen with implementations. Data cloud can be used in so many different scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think understanding the scenario is number one. From a best practice perspective, understanding the models that you want to create, because that's probably the hardest part of data cloud, is making sure you get the canonical modeling right. Because that can determine how the data is actually looking looked at from your marketer, from your sales and service, and so on, right? Uh, and so spend some time on that, understand what the canonical model is that that particular company would need or the industry would need. From an actual implementation perspective, you need to think up through, okay, which what is the velocity of the data that is coming in and what is the velocity you want to put it out? For example, is it all streaming end-to-end -end, or is it batch or is it a combination? And what do you want from that? And so those will determine sort of the success of your project. So from a best practices, understanding that scenario, understanding the time sensitivity of that end-to-end -end path is probably important. And obviously that comes also with the cost that uh, that you're willing to pay for that. Uh, Absolutely. And, and data cloud is a consumption-based pricing model. And so you use, you pay for sort of what you use, if you may. And so figuring out what you need is kind of important. I'd love to hear about any experience you've had with maybe um, existing implementations wanting to leverage data cloud. Maybe they've been on Salesforce products for years and maybe how that differs from like a greenfield implementation that's brand new and is ready to hook up data cloud. Like yeah. what are some of those differences? Because I know a lot of architects are working in non-greenfield uh, yeah. implementations. I, th I think it's a very, very good question. Um, I, I think there is, I will answer it in two ways. One is, what is your data landscape? You got to understand that first. Meaning, are you starting fresh? In which case, data cloud can becoming, become that store for you for all your data needs. Or do you have an expert data practice already? Maybe you already have existing warehouses, whether it's Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, whatever the case may be. I think understanding that data landscape is important because then you need to think through, okay, uh, where is that data going to get sourced, the sort of the system of truth, if you may, mm -hmm. and what are the data flows that needs to happen? So that's one. That's at the data level. The second part is, like I said, understanding, uh, do you just want that batch kind of processing? And if so, what do you need from it? Meaning, would you want unification of individuals? Mm -hmm. Or do you have an external MDM that can already give that or not? Uh, what kind of transformations and cleansing that you may have to do? Right? And then what are the scenarios that you need to do? Do you need some interesting insights? For example, I give an often good example like Interbanco. It's a LATAM customer. Right, They had a challenge with their marketing. This is an existing sort of application. Right, They had a challenge where 
they were sending a lot of marketing emails. Nobody, the click-through rate was very low. What they did was they just instrumented their web and mobile app using our SDK, sent the signals to Data Cloud, and then they created that simple calculated insight to say, cluster people based on their click-through patterns. So for example, uh, if you bought a new car, you will probably be clicking around a lot of the car insurance pages. Or if you're looking for a house, you will be clicking on the mortgage things, right? Based on that simple page tag, if you may, they created the clusters of people using our calculated insight. And then they did a more personalized campaign with that. They got a 35x ROI. Wow. Click through rate. Imagine, right? You get an email, you're searching for a car, you get an email that says, hey, you get a 20% off for your car insurance. The chance of you clicking on the mail is much higher than you get a random uh, something yeah. else, right? Here's a pizza coupon or something. So, <laughs> So I think, so that is the power you can do and an existing thing too. Got it, yeah. That is the power of data, right? Um, and and so, so that's kind of like the second layer, understanding that scenario and seeing what you need. Then the third thing is, what is your actioning systems? Is it service cloud? Is it sales cloud? Is it marketing? Is it commerce? All of the above, right? And that's important because then you need to know what are the integration points. If it's a service scenario, Okay, it could just be they want to look at that unified profile and all the engagement that people are doing. Or maybe you want to be triggering off a service case based on things that are happening in the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding that is very, very critical, right? Right. Um, and yes. right. So I would say those would be the three things to understand overall. Uh, the success I have seen is where if you start off with one or two concrete end to end steel threads, show the proof of it working and then building on it, right? Because- and Explain, and I've heard you say this before, but explain very quickly, steel thread. What do you mean when you say steel thread? Now, what I mean by a steel thread is take one end-to-end -end concrete case. It could be something like, I want to take my sales data, my marketing data, bring that together. And I want to be able to analyze and figure out who's my uh, who's propensity for them to uh, buy uh, based on their past history and their engagement patterns. Maybe I want to run a campaign on it. That's one steel thread, right? Got it. And what this forces you to do is to think through all, everything I said, which is, okay, where are the data sources? What is the output? What do I need to do processing in the middle, right? And then when you prove that out, it proves everything, all the integration points, and also the customer, they see that ease of use and how quickly they could get up and running. Because often what people don't realize is the biggest challenge they have in this data related thing is like data is stuck in these lakes or warehouses, right? For anything for the business to do, they have to go a large part to their IT department, file tickets, have them write some SQL query, only some SQL experts know to do. It's, it's like a massive overhead, right? With Absolutely. this, mm -hmm cause data cloud now lets IT control the data, but it democratizes the data to the right audience. So you could showcase how quickly this end-to-end -end thing can be built. And then from then they can actually, the business can actually leverage value. It could be a marketer who could go create new segments, or if it's a service person, they can start creating new alerts themselves, right? Things like that. I, I that. think that would be, I would say the best success is doing that. I love that. And that's a great, that's a great tie to, I think the way architects are thinking now with Salesforce well-architected. So you mentioned a lot of things like being able to measure those clear KPIs, um, making sure that something's simple and easy to maintain. I think there's just like lots of threads that we're going to be able to use data cloud to build really impressive, I think, business value driven solutions. And I just, I think in, in wrapping up, any other ways you can see that architects will be able to build these well-architected, healthy solutions with data cloud? Any parting parting words for our architects that are watching this? As architects, don't be afraid of data, right? You can now tame it and you can use it to your heart's content, whether you're looking at one cloud, two cloud, two orgs, three orgs, doesn't matter, or hundred orgs. I think the power of data cloud will be in your hands. You can bring more of it and sort of do more insights and actually have a better customer experience overall. Well, thank you so much for your time, MK. It's been a pleasure to speak with you and have a wonderful day, everyone.